In this lesson, we're going to take a look at what it means for triangles to be congruent and what are the conditions in which they are congruent. The first thing you need to know is that when you write a congruent statement, it is very important that you line up the congruent angles. In other words, when you say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, you're also saying that angle A is congruent to angle D because they're both first. Angle B is congruent to angle E because they're both second. And angle C is congruent to angle F because they're both third. You must line up the congruent angles. When you do this, you can even tell which sides are congruent. For example, I know that AB in that triangle would be congruent because it's the first two letters congruent to DE because DE are the first two letters on the other side. I know that BC, notice how they're the last two letters in the first statement, that's congruent to the last two letters EF in the second. And I know that AC, the outside two, that segment would be congruent to DF. When you know that triangles are congruent, you can state any of these things because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We often abbreviate this CPCT, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Sometimes you'll see it as CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. When you're given a congruent statement, it's an excellent idea to mark the angles that are congruent, especially when your triangles are turned a little bit and it might be hard to tell which sides and angles correspond. We can see that because M is first, that angle M and G is first is congruent to angle G. We can see that angle P is congruent because it's the second to angle N because it's the second. And last, that angle T, it's the third, is congruent to angle R, it's the third. And now we can also tell by looking at the angles which sides correspond. See how M is marked with a single and T with a double? In the other triangle, the single and the double, MT is congruent to RG. I can tell looking at the angles that between M and P, I've got the M with the single and P with the slash and G with the single and N with the slash. So this one is congruent to that one. MP is congruent to GN. And looking at the angles, I've got the slash and the double, one, two, three. On the other side, the slash and the double angle mark, I can tell those two sides correspond. And of course, I can always look at the statement and see that MP and GN are congruent segments, that PT and NR are congruent segments, that the outside two, M and T, that segment would be congruent to segment GR, the outside two. Now we know that when we have congruent triangles, that we have six corresponding parts, three sets of angles and three sets of sides. What we need to know now is what kind of conditions make a triangle congruent. The first one we're gonna look at is side, side, side. If we have three pairs of congruent sides, AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, and AC is congruent to DF. If we have three sets of congruent sides, then the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. We have one, two, three sets of congruent sides. Therefore, the triangles are congruent. The next way to prove triangles congruent is side angle side. 
it's very, very important that the sides and angles are in the correct order. Look at our given statement below. GH is congruent to JK. HI is congruent to KL. And angle H is congruent to angle K. Notice how H and K are between. This is a must. The angle must be what is called an included angle. Included means between. The angle must be between the two sides. If it's not, then you don't have side angle side. The next technique to prove triangles congruent is angle side angle. Again, the order is very important. It must be the same in both triangles. Look at our example. Our given is angle P and angle M are congruent. Angle N is congruent to angle Q. And MN is congruent to PQ. Notice how the side is between the two. This is required. Again, the side, like the previous one, is included. It's between the two angles. If the side is not between the two angles, you don't have angle side angle. It must be in the same order in the two triangles, the same corresponding order. And the side must be included, which means between. The last technique for today is angle angle side. Again, the order is super important. You must have things in the right angle. Notice angle, angle, side. The side is not between. It is not included. Look at our given. Angle U is congruent to angle X. Angle V is congruent to angle Y. And VW that segment is congruent to segment YZ. And the order is the important thing here. We have in order an angle, an angle, and a side. And the same corresponding order, an angle, an angle, and a side. At this point, students start making up all kinds of reasons. Anything you can do with those three letters, right? Well, a real common one I see students use, I'm going to put it in red, is side-side angle. There is no such thing as side-side angle. There actually is one case where it works if the triangle is right, but we don't call it side-side angle. I want you to observe something. Notice that side, 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 you can flip it and it's still side, side, side. Side, angle, side, you can flip the letters around in backwards order and it's still side, angle, side. The same with angle, side, angle. If you flip it, it's still angle, side, angle. Angle, angle, side is the one that is a little different. Side, angle, angle, we never call it that. We call it angle, angle, side. The thing I want you to notice about side-side angle is that if you spell it backwards, it's a bad word. Don't use it. It doesn't work. So don't look for it. If you get the bad word, it doesn't work. Here are some questions from your assignment. Look at the picture. The way the angles are marked is how you tell what corresponds. Even if the angles weren't marked, we could look at the sides and tell which sides correspond. Notice how that between the sides with the one and three slashes, one and three slashes, we can tell just by looking at the sides that R would have to correspond with G. Now, we don't need to do that here because the angles are marked. We see that H has one mark and M has one. So H corresponds with M. R has two marks. So we can tell that R 
corresponds with G. And C has three marks and D has three marks. So we know that C corresponds with D. And looking at the statement, since H is first, it would be congruent to M. As long as you've done the statement correct, that's what's important. R is second, and G is second. And C is third, and D is third. Angle C is congruent to angle D. Here we're given a congruent statement. Which angle in triangle JYR is congruent to angle Z? Well, since angle Z is third, R is third, it would be R. Which side in triangle JYR is congruent to WZ? Since WZ are the last two, YR is what it would have to be. My suggestion is to draw a picture. In question seven, we see that HA is congruent to ZT, that HO is congruent to ZB, that OA is congruent to BT. Why are the triangles congruent? We have three sets of congruent sides. That's side, side, side. Here are two triangles that are flipped towards each other. Angle Y is congruent to angle D. Angle P is congruent to angle B. YP is congruent to BD or DB. Notice how the side is included. It's between the two angles. That's what you have to have in order to have angle, side, angle. And that is what we have. In question 11, our given is that LR is congruent to MA, that LW is congruent to MC, that angle L is congruent to angle M, Again, notice how the angle is between the two sides. It's an included angle. Therefore, we have side, angle, side. For question 15, we have angle X congruent to angle E. Angle D congruent to angle C. And DF congruent to CB. Make sure you're paying close attention to the order. We have angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. For question 17, I have angle C congruent to angle B. CD congruent to BK, and segment DA is congruent to segment KP. Pay close attention to the order. What we have is side, side, angle, side, side, angle. Side, side, angle is a bad word spelled backwards. Don't use it. These are not congruent. For these questions, you have to say why they're congruent and give the congruent statement. Marking the angles is very, very useful. So my suggestion is to draw a quick picture and mark the angles. We are given that angle L is congruent to angle Y, that angle D is congruent to angle C, that DL, that segment, is congruent to segment CY. Notice how the side is included. It is between the two angles. 
Therefore, we have angle, side, angle. Now, you can mark the angles. Notice that the third angle is unmarked, so I'll mark it. We know it corresponds. And LDJ, LDJ, we're going to go in the same corresponding order. It would be triangle Y, C, Z. In question 24, we're given that angle R is congruent to angle Y, that angle J is congruent to angle V, that JX is congruent to segment PV. Notice the order. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. That's that one right there. And let's mark the angles. I'll mark X congruent to P. So we know that JRX, follow the same corresponding R order, JRX would be triangle VYP. In question 29, angle T is congruent to angle E. TV is congruent to EN. And VP is congruent to NY. Look at the order very carefully. We have angle, side, side or I've been calling it side-side angle. Either way, it's a bad word. Don't use it. These are not congruent. So what is the correct congruent segment? There is none. Make sure you answer both questions. These last couple questions are quick. The thing you have to realize is if you know what vertical angles are, you know that this angle and this angle are congruent. It's part of what you know. Even if it's not listed in the given, the fact that you have the picture and that you know what vertical angles are, you can say that. So that is part of what we know. So the question is, what do I need to have side angle side? Well, I need the angle to be between the two sides. So the two sides that would have to be congruent would be BC and CF. BC and CF. And those should have segment bars over them. I didn't write this question, and this was probably written before they were able to do things like segment bars. So make sure you remember that when you use congruent, congruent is for shapes, and shapes are what is congruent. Numbers are equal. You must use bars on your segments when you are using congruence. And the last question on your assignment, notice how the two triangles share a side. We could get that segment in a proof by using the reflexive property. RT is congruent to RT, and it's in both triangles. Notice how we have a right angle in both triangles. Therefore, we have in order side, angle, side, side, angle, side. We know that the two triangles are congruent. Therefore, if RU is 16, the corresponding side would be RS, and it would also be 16.